But they are your friends. Everywhere you turn, they are troubles. How many of you like to make troubles? No, I want to claim that. But then the Lord Jesus Christ said this in chapter 16 of John, verse 33. He said, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In Jesus Christ, we can have me at peace. But then look at this. In the world, you will have tribulations. But be good cheer. I have overcome the world. What does that mean, I have overcome the world? Meaning that God has a place. God has made something. He has conquered everything that is in the world. Sin and death, all the troubles have been conquered away. And there is a place called heaven where He prepared for us. Without the Lord Jesus Christ, you and me, we can never experience peace. But if you want the peace of God in your life right now, you make sure that you make peace with God first. How do you make peace with God? To have peace with God is that you were to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, not just confessing your sins with your lips, but repent and turn away from your sins and surrender your life to God. Say, Jesus Christ, Lord, I want you to be my God, my Savior, my Lord. And have a personal relationship with Him. That's what it means. To live with Him now. If you don't live with Christ now, you will never live up with Christ later when you die. Do you understand that? This is the only chance we have, church. Only chance for your loved ones that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ yet. For your friends and all those people that you know. is the last chance for them right here on earth. Apostle Paul, uh, Peter, he had heaven in his mind, in his heart, his, he lived for heaven. Look at 1 Peter 4, 13, he said, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering. He said like rejoice in the suffering basically, in Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. In other words, Peter, even though he was being tormented, being, I mean, being beaten by all of these uh, people that are against the Lord Jesus Christ, he was, uh, he, by the way, he died being crucified upside down. Do you know that? And yet in all of that, he said he was rejoicing. It was he cuckoo? No. Because he knew that this is not lie. This is not what it is for my place, heaven. Lord my God, that's everything of my life. And that's what I'm looking for. Luke chapter 6, verse 22. The Lord Jesus Christ himself told his disciples, Blessed or happy are you when men hate you. What? And it says, happy are you when they exclude you, when they revile you, when they cast, uh, cast out your name as evil. For you are the, for, for the sons of men's sake. Rejoice. In the day, in that day, and leap for joy. Oh my goodness. Is Christian a bunch of crazy people? No. Look at why. For indeed your reward is great in heaven. For in like manner their fathers did to the prophets. In other words, that you know, rejoice in everything, even when you're being persecuted for the name of Christ. For Christ's sake. Why? Because great is the reward in heaven. Heaven is should be everything. If heaven is not matter to you, then your life is not worth a living. Why is it? Because everything you do, if it's heaven is not in your mind, then it will not last at all. You might enjoy it right now. So this is great. Life is great. <laughs> you know? I don't need God. This is good. I love this life. I tell you this. Be honest. At the end of that, who <laughs> had what is that next? What is next? Oh, gotta work hard again to get that hoo hoo ah isn't it? Or get your friend, your best friend's name, Visa and MasterCards. Piling up all of that. At the end of it, you look at the bill, it's like, oh, troubles, troubles. And if you realize that your life is just like that hamster in the wheel. No excitement. Maybe once in a while you go fast, and then I'm tired, you're like, ah. Uh, and they're going, mm -hmm. <laughs> what life is that? It's not worth a living. Second reason why heaven should matter to us, because it is real. 
Look at what the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 2 says, In my Father's house are many mansions, many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. What the Lord Jesus Christ says, listen, guys, Christians, <laughs> I got a place for you. This is not a place for you yet. I have a place for you. Revelation chapter 22, verse 6. <clears throat> He said, the Lord Jesus Christ said, these words, talking about the words of everything that Jesus said about all, about heavens, about the place, and, you know, the New Jerusalem. He said that these words are faithful and true. And the Lord God of holy prophets sent his angels to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. Did you hear that? God sent his angels to show you and me of the reality of heaven. Of what's to come and what is now up there in heaven and because of that the Word of God and the reality of hell uh, heaven that should make our life worth a living and the last but not the least this is the peak of everything you ready because Jesus Christ is coming again because Jesus Christ is coming again you may say I don't believe it Hey, that's not going to change the truth. You might say like, ah, you know what? There's just a bunch of mumbo jumbo Christian things. I'll tell you this. Every eyes shall see. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You may deny Him. You may say that is not true. You may have all the excuses you want. But the truth will stand still. Because Christ had returned once. And He's going to come again. And that's for sure. Look at the word of the Lord Jesus Christ, verse 3 and 4. And I, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. And that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Girls, church, the Lord Jesus Christ will come back. The same way when the Lord Jesus Christ went up to the heaven in Acts chapter 1 verse 9. And the two angels says to, him, to the disciples like, why are you gazing up to the sky? They said the same, the same way Jesus was taken up into heaven will also come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. He's going to come back the same way. When I went to Israel, I went to Mount Olive. And it was, um, I don't know how to say that, experience. It's, it's indescribable. Not because the place is beautiful with all the trees. It's actually, the place is not as beautiful as in New Zealand, to be honest with you. There's a bunch of graveyards right now in the um, Mount Olive. The graveyards of the Jews, of the Hebrews, all that in that property. No one else can be buried in there. No Chinese, no Samoan, nobody, only the Hebrews can be buried in that, in that property of Mount Olive. But then, by the holy city, by Jerusalem, on the wall of Jerusalem, on the east side, I believe to be, there are graveyards as well. That's the graveyards for the Muslims. And I asked this, uh, our tour guide, who is also an archaeologist and historian, I said, why did the Muslims be buried over there? I thought they don't believe in Jesus. They said, no, no, they do believe in believe. They, they, do you know the word Jesus Christ is in their book? But anyway, they believe that when the Lord Jesus Christ returns, He's going to walk through the eastern gate. And so they're saying that if their faith is true, that Ishmael is the, the true descendant of Abraham, then those barriers, those graveyards are going to be the one that rise up first. Well, they're missing the part when the Lord Jesus Christ is going to return on Mount Olive. <laughs> now, what's amazing about that, when I look at Mount Olive, and I thought about the back, the, the past, when Jesus Christ was ascended, and the Bible says He will descend from heaven right there. And as I look at there standing in Mount Olive, and look up now, like, <laughs> Lord God, come quickly. I look up and I say, Lord God, come quickly. When I look down, and look around. Deep in my heart says, God, please have mercy. Not now. Not yet. 
Because there are people out there that I know, they do not know the Lord Jesus Christ yet. So would you please, God, just hold on for a moment. No, I'm not you, God. I, I'm not over you. I'm not telling you what to do. It's not my will to be done, but yours. But I beg you, God, not now. But whenever you look up on that one olive, you're like, oh, it's coming. And you see things around that's going on here. He is coming soon. I'm telling you that. Very soon. But for those of you in Christ, I want to give you this word of encouragement. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to His glorious body, according to the working by which He is able even to subdue all things to Himself. If you are already a citizen of heaven, right here on earth, you will continue to be a citizen of heaven when Christ returns. But if you're not a citizen of heaven now, there is no application form when you die to go to be a citizen of heaven. Do you notice that a lot of times when people come into the country of New Zealand, they apply for the visas from their country, yeah? And they use this ambassadors to approve it. The Bible says that we are God's ambassadors. As God pleading through us to that lost souls, come and repent, be repentant, now repent. If you're here today, you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. God has sent His ambassadors right here. You can find it right in this place. Not just me. Those of us who are in Christ, we are God's ambassadors. And pleading, God is pleading through us to you. Repent. Now. Before it's too late. Because if Christ returned tonight, and He could very much that they return, return tonight, that you are ready, that you are a citizen of heaven. So then, if you are raised with Christ, Christians, seek those things which are above. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God, Set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. You hear that, Christians? You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you know Him? Do you? Do you really know the Lord Jesus Christ? You have a personal relationship with Him. That your mind should set on things above, not things on earth. That the things on earth, it does not satisfy you at all. And it's not even part of your nature. If you say, like, I'm a Christian, but I'm still have one foot on the things on earth because I really enjoy it being in there. I want to question about your relationship with Jesus Christ. You need to look into your heart. I'm not trying to condemn you. I'm not trying to judge you. I want you to examine your heart. Are you truly in Christ? Because if you know that Christ is real in your life, if you know that heaven is real, that you will not dare even to put one foot on the other side to even have a taste of earth, the things on earth, but only the things of God. I want you to examine your mind as we're closing in prayer. What is your mind right now set upon? Was that things of God or things on earth? Just because you come once a week to the church? Just because you are... You know, doing something once a week with things, you know, and helping you. That does not mean really that you are, have the things in mind of Christ. Because anybody can just go to church. And I'm talking about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. One verse that always bothered me in the Bible is that Matthew chapter 7. When the Lord Jesus Christ on the last day, there will be people, these are people that claim to be believers in Christ. They cried out and says, Lord, Lord, have we not done miracles in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name? Have we not performed and do a lot of things in your name? 
The Lord Jesus Christ says, depart from me, you pure of lawlessness. Because you never do the will of my Father. There be people that have done performing things in church and doing things, even saying things named Jesus' name in churches or buildings, whatever it is. The Lord Jesus Christ says, depart from me. That's a scary thought for me. My prayer is that there's none of you in this place, members of ABC Central, that none of you are in that category. So I want you to be honest with God this morning. Be honest to God. Do you really know the Lord Jesus Christ? Really? Or are you just playing church, playing, church, playing Christians? This is something serious because heaven is real. And hell also is real. Would you please bow your heads in the attitude of prayer? Uh, this morning you just had a glimpse, just a glimpse of heaven. There's so much more you can study in the Bible. What heaven is going to look like. The street of gold. The wonderful building of the heaven of the new Jerusalem and all that. But before we go too far in there, first of all, I want to ask you this. Do you really know the Lord Jesus Christ? Can you honestly say that if you're right now, if Jesus Christ returned right now and stand, you stand before Him, can you honestly say that the Lord Jesus Christ says, hey, come, you good and faithful servant. Or would you think that God will say to you, Depart from me. Because you never do the will of God. I'm not trying to scare you anything. I just want to bring it to reality. Examine your life. Not just today life. I'm talking about your life as a whole right now. Can you honestly stand before the Lord Jesus Christ right now? And be able to say like Lord God Jesus Christ. I am yours. Without a shadow of doubt that I have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because I have placed my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. My life is in Christ. Because I have been crucified with Christ. It's because no longer I will live, but Christ will live in me. Can you honestly say that before God today? If you're here today and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to strongly urge you, come to know Him today. Don't think about people around you. Right now, think about this. You will stand before God. Right now, you are before God. And God having a personal confrontation with you. Do you really know Him? If you do not know Him as your Lord and Savior, Please give me the privilege to pray for you this morning. I want to bring you to the throne of God in prayer. And I want to ask God to have mercy upon your soul and to save you. To, for Him to reveal Himself to you in a very special way. Through His Word. Is there anyone like that by the testimony of your heart? Would you please raise your hand as a testimony of your heart? Say, Pastor, would you please pray for me? I do not know the Lord Jesus Christ honestly. But I want to know Him. I want heaven to be my reality of my life. Would you please pray for me, Master? I, I don't know everything, but I want to know. God has compelled it deep in my heart. I want to know Him. I'm going to stop pulling around. I want to stop playing around. Is there anyone like that? Would you please slip up your hand really quick? There's nothing to be embarrassed about this. Most of us in here already come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. But I don't want to make any assumptions. Only God knows the heart. But the heart of man is deceitful, the Bible says. Is there anyone in here this morning who said, pray for me? I want to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Or perhaps you want to know Him today. You have heard so much from the pulpit here, from the study of the Word of God, and you really want to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ right now, right here, this morning, would you come? Don't delay, come. Don't let the devil 
play and tricking things in your heart, in your mind. Satan is just always want to do that. Satan wants you just to take your mind away from the things of God and put the things on earth on your mind. Is there anyone here before I close the prayer? Maybe it could be your last chance. And this is not discouraging because the Bible says that life is like a vapor. Here today and gone tomorrow. It could be before the Lord's return, something take place that your life is down on earth and it could be too late. Is there anyone here before I close in glory? Last chance. Is there anyone say, Pastor, pray for me? Pray for me. I want to know the Lord Jesus Christ. I say last chance means right now before I close in prayer. Is there anyone else here today? Perhaps you are Christians, you know the Lord Jesus Christ, but heaven is not a reality in your mind, in your hearts. Once you come to, once you come to your right sense to this, come to God and say, God, I want my eyes, my mind to seek those things which are above things of Christ, not things on earth. Lord, forgive me for I have consumed myself so much with the things on earth, not the things of God. Lord, I want to repent. I don't want to waste your time. Not my time, because my time is yours. I don't want to waste your time that you have given to me to live on earth, to be your testimony, to serve you, so that others may come to you. You need to repent. Father God, I thank you for your word today. <coughs> Lord, even though there is so much of heavens that we can learn from your word, we just got a glimpse of it this morning. But we know just for a glimpse of it, it is real. Because your word is true. Your word is faithful and true. And because you are preparing a place for us. And most of all because our Lord Jesus Christ, you will come again. Father God, I pray we'll have mercy upon those here today who do not know you yet. I don't know what's the hold up, but I know one thing, God, that Satan is having a part of it. <coughs> Lord, I pray that you would just Break that strongholds in the hearts of the people here today that do not know you yet. Pray that they will be humble, that they will come to the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior before it's too late. Lord, I pray for your people here, the times that we have been given by you to live as your testimony, to live as your ambassadors, to live in your power, to live in the reality of heaven. God, I pray that we will not waste any more of your time and of your resources. But for us, Lord, to set our minds on things above, not things on earth. For us not to be consumed by the things on earth, but be consumed by the things of you. That we will be eagerly seeking more of you to do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes for your glory to be revealed, especially to those who do not know you yet. That they may come to know you. God, I believe right now there are many minds and hearts that are thinking about their loved ones, their friends, their loved ones in their, their friends that they see every day that do not know you yet. Lord God, I pray that the reality of heaven will make us to go bold, will be more bold to tell them about you, Lord. Because it could be tomorrow that you return, or it could be today. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. And we pray this in Jesus Christ's name and all God's people say. Amen. As good as it is to talk about heaven, I can't help but think about people that not know, do not know yet about heaven or don't know if they're going to end up in heaven. Kind of mixed feeling, isn't it, after hearing that message?
And one is like, yes, looking forward for that city, looking forward for that place of heaven. But on the other hand, you think about your loved ones, your friends that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're like, wow. Oh. So, Christians, let's continue worshiping God in our lives so that others may see Christ in us and worship the Lord Jesus Christ one day soon. I hope they would be blessed by that message. Looking forward next week, Pastor Martin will be come up here and he will bring on the second part of heaven. And uh, he's going to talk a little bit more about a more personal level about heavens and us. Okay. And, uh, and I know it's going to be a big blessing to you. And then in two weeks, we're going to continue with the message and talk about the reality of hell. How many of you, before today, have heard the message or the preaching about heaven and hell? Okay, only a few. All right. How many of you have really studied much about heaven and hell before? No, only one or two. You know, it's, the Bible speaks more about heaven and hell than anything. A lot of us, but the Bible also talks about money and treasure, possessions, more than heaven and hell. Can you believe that? Why is it? Because those things can lead you apart, away from God. Mm. God gives a lot of warnings in here. Don't take it lightly. Amen? So let's continue our worship in the Lord right now with our tithes and offering. This is our time for us to worship God. So let's take this seriously. And uh, let me invite God to come up and lead us, please. Thank you.